Okay, good morning, everyone. We're here for the Village of Airmont for the uh, Community Design Review Committee, Tuesday, December 12th, uh, 2023 at 11 a.m. Uh, the first agenda item is Brookside Storage, 166, 184, and 188, Route 59. It's for warehouse storage facilities, and it's a revision of the preliminary site plan that had been um, before the planning board as a workshop, and they made some changes, which I'm sure they will go over. Good hey, morning. Morning. Oh, morning. Oh, John. Hi, Dave. How are you? Good. So, okay. Want me to go? <laughs> All right, uh, I'll, I'll introduce. Uh, basically, uh, when we were at the workshop, we had some comments that uh, affected our layout. And uh, uh, there was at least two comments, maybe three comments from the county planner about the amounts, the amount of the variances. We had five variances at the time and the impact of the variances. And then we had a comment from uh, the Montebello mayor and that had to do with the amount of the variances, the amount being five and, and the percentage of the variance requested. And the third comment had to do with the Rockland County sewer. So uh, we went back and we had to redesign the building. Uh, the building's completely different than it was before. Uh, our original plan had the docks on the right side, which is the east side. And now we have the truck docks in the back on the north side. Uh, we still have the circular route around it, and we also have the parking in the front. But our new building uh, changes uh, the amount of variances. Uh, on our original, we needed a front setback of 75 foot. We had 55, and we had a yard uh, required 15. We had 10. Now we meet both of those uh, requirements, so we, we eliminated the variances. That's two of them. Uh, we had a side setback on the original. That would be the left side, standing in the road looking at the building, or the west side. Uh, we had the building at 30 foot. Now we meet the code of 50 with this new plan, so we eliminated that one. Uh, we still need a side yard, and that's the measurement from the property line to the curb on the west side, on the left side. We're at seven uh, before we had five. So we've reduced the amount of the variance. And the last thing is the building height. And the building height we had at 61, uh, we're now at 59 and we have reduced that. And the effect uh, for that, uh, the impact of the new plan was we dropped a floor in the building uh, down to 412, which was 417 and that dropped the height of the building. And that changed the grade around the building. We had to do that because this, the, the biggest problem we had was Rockland County sewer. Uh, through the middle of the plan and through the middle of the proposed building is a 16 inch sewer main. And we have to reroute that, relocate it on the outside of the loop road and then going through the back of the pavement area, a brand new 16 foot uh, a 16 inch pipe with the easement, and then that would be dedicated to the county. The county's comment was they cannot have any structure over the pipe. So we had a very high retaining wall and that would not be allowed by the county. So basically we had to regrade the site to eliminate the retaining wall on the east side, right side of the building and in the back, uh, which is the north side. So those, those uh, comments and that revision really changed the whole building. So we just wanted to bring the building back and introduce it before we moved ahead. Uh, though the comments also uh, did a major change to the building in size. Uh, the original building was uh, 93,000 square foot plus, and this one's going to be 81,000 square foot plus. So we lost uh, 10,000 square foot of the building. Uh, some through variance and then some through design. Uh, the, the, it's still the same uh, basic layout. And uh, 
because of those changes, we thought it would be best to come back to CDRC. And then uh, for the next application, we would uh, do a full set with the drainage and landscaping and so on. So that's why we're here. And, and uh, we're ready for your comments or any kind of questions. John, do you want to go through your letter? Sure. Um, so we did a, 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 a kind of an updated review letter dated December 11th. Uh, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before. And uh, so a lot of the comments, obviously, since you're now back to kind of a concept plan or for the future that don't really apply now, but we kind of kept them in there so that moving forward, uh, you know, I don't lose track of what's been addressed and what hasn't. So um in light of the fact that uh, a, a number of variances have been have been eliminated by by redoing a smaller scale plan, we, we think that is a much better plan than the previous plan. Um, the only concern I have, and and I don't know if the attorney wants to comment now or down down the road, but the height variance, <clears throat> um, I think you're going to need to provide some sort of justification in in writing uh, at the ZBA or at the planning board, because what I don't want to do is create a precedence where other people come in and ask for additional variances to the height. Um, so I think it's important that at some point in time, we have a, 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 dis a distinctive real reason why this particular building is entitled to a height variance in lieu of say another building down the road. <clears throat> that being said, um, most of my planning comments uh, just just reiterate the fact that this is a type one action. We got to we got to do a circulation and notice of intent um, and, uh, you know, architectural review committee uh, compliance with uh, uh, adjoining village comments mm -hmm. and some traffic engineer comments. We do need a traffic study. I don't know if we ever did one or ever, if it ever got to the DOT or whether you're just coming back. But we're going to definitely need that because there's a lot of truck traffic coming in and out and so forth. Um, and moving on to the engineering comments, most of them pertain to the fact that now that we're we're back to a concept plan that, you know, a full SWIP is required. Uh, you know, I'm sure this is all <coughs> stuff for you guys, but uh, we're back to a kind of a concept plan, but I left them in there. Um, the water and sewer and grading plans and, and uh, uh, erosion sediment control plans, uh, retaining wall design. I did put in there that ship overview uh, is required because I saw on the long form EAF that um, there is a potential for archaeological sensitivity on this site. So we're asking for that. Um, and also the DEC review for uh, potential presence of endangered and threat, th uh, uh, threatened and endangered species because it did identify, uh, I believe it was the timber rattlesnake, maybe it wasn't, but there was one. It was. Okay. So it we're asking. Pretty much the remaining comments are all repeat comments from the from the previous review. Some of them may have a little more explanation, but overall, from a planning engineering perspective, this seems plan is a is a is considerably a better plan than the previous one. I have one question uh, that has to do with the engineering uh, comment six sidewalks. Um, I, I understand uh, are required. The statement, but uh, what we found in the Village of Aramont Comprehensive Plan, uh, it's figure figure nine. Uh, the proposed sidewalks actually stop at that old gas station next to us, and I believe that's because of that culvert. Uh, so, if if you would look into that and. Uh, Please look into that and get back to us, but it does uh, depict on that uh, figure nine uh, proposed sidewalks. Um, it does stop at that gas station. So the, the I'm sorry, the frontage, the frontage along this particular property does not have sidewalks now, correct? correct. No, there is no sidewalks. That's correct. Okay. okay, so it's been the, the village's policy and pretty much every view I've done on a state highway, um, pretty much on a county highway, that we asked the applicant to install sidewalks for safety of pedestrians. John, uh, but, there, John, but what, what Dave, what 
what Dave is alluding to is in, in your master plan, in the village's master plan, there's a, a, a proposed sidewalk improvement plan along 59. And the proposed sidewalk shifts to the south side of 59 right at that area. Um, so the plan in the comp was to run the sidewalks along the southern side of 59, not along the northerly side. And as Dave indicated, probably the reason there is there's a huge culvert there um, where you have, uh, you know, the stream comes through the okay. wetlands. So All right, let me take, I'll take a look I, at I it. I think the idea was not to disturb the, the wetlands with a culvert for the purposes of building sidewalks. So we can send you the section of the comp plan for you to, guys to take a look at. Um, but, you know, okay. that's what we want to do. Okay. We want to avoid the sidewalks here because we don't want to disturb the wetlands. We don't want to put in a huge culvert um, just for the sidewalks when the plan calls for the sidewalks to be on the other side of the road. Okay, I will tell you that the gas station is on the next planning board meeting and they are required, I believe, to put in sidewalks. They are. I, I just wanted to point that out, and they will be seeking to open just to pump gas. Yeah, and and that and that shows on that comprehensive plan. Okay, no, I just I didn't know if you were Sidewalk aware. Goes there, stops okay. at the gas station, then comes across and runs from Brookside down down the the shopping mall there. Yeah, uh -huh. I know what you mean. One fifty six. The next property next to it has sidewalks. Correct. It does have sidewalks. Bring that up. Yes. 156 through 59. That's where all the offices are, right, Lou? Correct. Yeah. 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 And, sidewalks. Yeah. yeah. and I believe, Ron, I think I mentioned to the to you that we should take into account for your traffic study the gas station as well. You're on mute. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Yes, yeah, Suzanne. And um just to address John real quick, we did do a traffic study um back in July. It was reviewed by the village engineer, uh, Nelson and Pope. We have comments. That's actually mentioned in item two, I believe, of your letter, John. So we'll address those. And I might—I don't know if I just said it, but we did include the gas station in our first traffic study. I thought you did. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yep, thank you, Suzanne. So I, I assume that this plan is a—I mean, since it's since it's considerably less square footage, uh, the numbers would be, if anything, less than the numbers presented in the original traffic study. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. But there are other comments from Nelson and Pope that will address. So, you know, the village will get an updated traffic study okay. um, to address all their comments. Okay. Okay. Right. And Ron, you, you, you had the preliminary comments from the DOT that you are also working on, right? Yeah, those are more, uh, you know, site plan issues, comments, you know, for Dave. But yeah, we'll work with Dave to address, you know, those comments as well where needed. Okay. The, the only other thing I just wanted to note on your um, memo, John, is uh, item number one on your planning that you're saying it's a type one action. We had discussed this um, back in June and I gave you a list of the type one actions and you agreed that it's not a type one action um, when we went to the CDRC meeting in August. So the procedure is still the same. I mean, we still have to do the coordinated review and send out the notice of intent and all that kind of stuff. But just for the record, you know, I it, it shouldn't really be classified as a as a type one action. It should be. Uh, I, I'm I'm okay with that. I'll change the letter to reflect an unlisted action, and also in light of the fact that you've reduced the building by ten thousand square feet. <clears throat> Thank you, Lou. Did you have anything? Yeah, the only comment I had is a, a question for Dave, actually. Which is the right rear corner? Is that the corner where the power pad sits? Yeah, the right. Yeah, the right rear corner would be where that uh, dumpster is. Oh, okay. We have a slight change in that. The architect just the architect just finished his plans for the steel, so we have to we have to make a slight change to get the angles. But uh, yes, that's the right rear corner. Well, that's going to have a roof height of seventy two feet. Uh, that that would have a roof height at that uh, elevation, yes, because we have to get low to get around the corner. So that that's where your uh, your your height is right there at that corner. We can't have any walls that, that you know we're forced by the county sewer 
mandate not to have any walls there. So yes, that, that's actually the worst condition. Okay. See, if you look at the front left, like, you, well, you're looking at it, I'm sure, but yeah, the front left is 43, then the front right is um, uh, 57. But the back right is our, our problem area because at that uh, first layout, we had a 10-foot wall in there. Yeah, the back left is no prize either at 64, but... No. I'm just thinking because the ladder truck is going to, if you if you have an issue, they're going to have to get up to the roof. It's going to be a little difficult in, in that corner at all. The whole rear of the building is going to be hard to get to. I thought they only needed access to one part of the roof at one 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 area. It's based on the size of the building. They might want to get two trucks in there somewhere, but... And then if they have to do any venting and get up on the roof, you might have more than one ladder accessing it. But well, well I, I got to put the fire hydrants on, so uh, maybe you can talk to them, and if that becomes an issue, we'll, we'll have to address it. Okay. Yeah, they did send the letter dated December 4th. Yeah, yeah so. I got to I put that. And, and like I said, the architect just finished the plans, and there's some slight changes in there. And uh, he also said he changed some of the roof lines, but... I don't. I didn't have it to submit. I just got it yesterday. So we'll we'll make those revisions and and then send the details with our next application. Okay. But we're we're still back kind of at a, a concept plan. So we're going to need more more detail. I'm I'm, I'm yeah. fairly certain that the board that this needs to come back to another CDRC meeting. Well, we'll we'll make the changes and wherever you put us, we'll show up. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um. Anything else for anybody? No, I guess that's it. There was nothing else other than the Tallman Fire Department letter, right, Suzanne? No, I didn't. It was just Tallman and the letter I received this morning because I wasn't here yesterday. That came in from from John that okay. I sent this morning. That was it. And okay. then. When it does go to planning again, I'll send out for new uh, new comments, new GML and all that. Yeah, we'll start it all over again. We'll go to the planning board and we'll have the public hearing. We'll send out all the comments, yeah. everything else. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. I guess I have nothing else either. Ron, anything else? Okay. Thank you, Dave. That was a great presentation. Thank you, have Thank a happy you. holiday, everybody. Have a good holiday. Oh, Thank you, too. you guys. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Yep. <clears throat> okay. The next application is the Cherry Lane Hot Sola 275 Cherry Lane. Um, it's for a chairman's endorsement for the site plan and elevations. Um, there are some changes still being made to the resolution. There were some um, map notes and things like that that were not in there and some missing dates of letters. So you will be getting that to ensure that it's on the final plan as discussed at the meeting. So when you submit for chairman's endorsement, we have all of that on there. Um, John, if you wanna go over your letter. Yeah, these are these are just the remaining things I have. Uh, so under the planning, the only thing I have, have left is that um, there, there were some, I believe some requested overrides that were granted and just wanna make sure that uh there's document documentation yes. supporting the overrides and that we have that yeah and that's so one that. of the resolutions where i had to make a ton of changes okay um that things that were needed to be included and incorporated um some of the vote counts were off which i double checked not only my notes the the tape as well so i've made those changes for the attorney to review and okay. as soon as they're reviewed they'll go to you to you all uh okay. meeting the applicant and you'll get a copy as well but things okay. like, you know, the the I, it might be on there, but I didn't honestly look like the, the hours of operation, the, the hours of the fly car, the maintenance person, all of those things were not, as we discussed at the meeting as part of the approval, were not in the actual resolution, which I added in. And I just need the final approval. Those, those were added as map notes to the plan. Yes, right. And then I'll need... When all of that is all done, I'll need seven original sets, which mm -hmm. I'll stamp, and then you can have the owner sign of the property, okay. and then I'll have the chairperson sign, planning board chairperson. Okay. 
Okay. Um, John, you want so, to go through? Yeah. So then the, the only other comments I had, um, and uh, that pretty much this is probably the fifth time it's on the plan, is we do need infiltration testing. Um, I believe the engineer gave a kind of a, a, a projected or a, a potential infiltration test and did his chambers based on that. Um, but the actual infiltration test has not been done. We just had one where um, later on it was determined that there, the infiltration, that the soil is poor and it involved a complete engineering redesign and having to come back before the board. And so in order to avoid that, I want to make sure that there, the, the site is capable of infiltration because that's what's proposed on the plan. So yeah, we'll schedule it. Do you want to witness it or I, I, I do not want to witness it. So um, if your engineer is comfortable with it, um, well, I'm I know okay with it, whether, whether or not the building department, uh, then contract the building department. Lincoln Tully will witness. Lincoln Tully will, okay, fine. So we'll schedule with Tegula, sure, no problem. And John, actually that particular applicant you just spoke of requested maybe that it's in the village's best um best procedural way to do the infiltration testing early on rather than after an approval is done and then they go to build okay. so that this doesn't happen again to someone else. I don't know how you make that happen as part of your comments in the beginning or what, but he just said, you know, you got an approval almost three years ago and he didn't know there was an issue until they went to start to build. And okay. that's why if we do it earlier, we won't have this problem again and have to that's, either go back. So that's to usually why this is usually done at building permit stage because um, it's part of the building permit review. Yeah. Yes, I understand that. But I think that what he want, is saying is to do it earlier so that um, you don't have to build right away once you get an approval. You have three years to do so. But right. at least that stage of that portion is done so that if something needs to be redesigned, it's in the planning stage and you don't have to re-come back and do all your approvals again, go to CDRC and planning. That's what he's saying. Right. Right. And it's, 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 you don't want to have to go through all that because you really sure. want to make sure that you have your infill, your, your system, right. your, your soils are capable of providing infiltration because it can completely change your design and could potentially send you back to the, like, like Suzanne said, back to the whole process condensed process, but nonetheless, uh, uh, unnecessary time spent trying to reapprove a project as a result of not having any infiltration. So you, you definitely want to get it done now. Uh, two and three are just comments pertaining to the, uh, now I, I did see there was a um, kind of a maintenance schedule, but there, yeah. I didn't see an actual agreement well, and there's also a bond that's required. Right. So typically, John, I ask everybody to do Schedule A for you to review that you're satisfied with Schedule A. Once you are and you assign the escrow amount, then they give me the completed agreement with the escrow amount and okay. the final uh, Schedule A, as long as as long as you're not making any changes to it. No. And then they okay. give me the original notarized. I have the mayor sign it and his signature notarized. And then I give it back to the applicants' representatives. They get it um, filed with the the county and give us proof of filing. Okay, so so I'm okay with the schedule. Okay. Uh, the maintenance bond has to be provided. I provided the number, um, right. and then so so I'll let I'll let the attorney polish off the actual signature and all that stuff with the agreement. Comment three: I'm making adding some changes to the uh, to the to the cost estimate. Uh, right. Some of the numbers are low, so I'm asking for those numbers to be changed and resent. <clears throat> okay. okay. That's all I got. Um, I do have a question. Are you, is your applicant planning on returning for the sign? Are you yes. going forward with the sign? Okay. Yes. I just didn't know. That's why I was asking. We decided just to wait for, you know. For this visit. to be done. Yeah. I understand. Okay. And then we just have to go through the same process, unfortunately, just for the sign, yeah. as long as you're aware. Okay. Lou, did you have anything? Chris? No. no? Okay. Great. Thank you all. That's it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a happy holiday to you. Thanks. And okay. Take thank care, you. Everyone. You too, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.